Hello, this is Mr. Buffington. We're going to be looking at fractions again, and this time we're talking about getting common denominators. So first off, we need to talk about what is a denominator. The denominator is the number on the bottom of a fraction. So just a quick recap on the vocabulary. The denominator is on the bottom of the fraction. Now, a common denominator is two or more fractions that have the same denominator. So this is 3 over 5, 1 over 5, 5 over 5, 10 over 5, 4 over 5. You notice they're not all in lowest terms, and they're definitely not um, in any kind of order as far as the size of them. They just have common denominators with the same number on the bottom. You could also have um, fractions that have variables in the numerator. You could have negative fractions. As long as they have have the same exact denominator, then we call that a common denominator. So any set of fractions you can rewrite with common denominators, any set of fractions. And this is um, what we're going to do today. We're going to take a look at how we actually go through that process. So let's start with this fraction, 1 3rd and 5 6 What we're going to do is you first list the multiples of that denominator or of both denominators. Now, in the past, when we were reducing fractions to lowest terms, we listed factors. And a common mistake is to, to um, misplace or um, get confused between multiples and factors. Factors are the numbers that will multiply together to give you a denominator. Multiples are the numbers that you can get when you multiply something times that number. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 3 times 1, 3 times 2, 3 times 3, and so on. There can be an infinite number here as long as we keep adding numbers on here. So 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, 27, 30, we could keep going and going and going. That's what multiples are. For 6, I've just listed a couple of them, 6, 12, 18, 24. Now you'll notice that with these, I have several common multiples. And what I'm trying to do is to identify the least common multiple or the lowest common multiple. I know that 24 is common, 18 seems to be common, 12 is common, and 6 is common. So what I need to do is I need to identify the least common multiple or the one that's the lowest, and that's 6. So 6 is our least common multiple or our lowest common multiple called the LCM, all right, least common multiple. What I need to do now is to make the fraction so that they both have this least common multiple as the denominator. So to do that, with my fraction of 1 third, I'll say, what do I have to do to 3 to multiply times 3 to give me 6? And because I've listed them in order, this is 3 times 1, 3 times 2, I'll multiply 3 times 2 to get 6. So it's pretty easy if you list them all in order like that. Now whatever you do to the denominator, you have to do to the numerator as well. So 1 times 2 is 2. So you'll notice you've created 1 third and 2 sixths. You've created equivalent fractions. We haven't changed the value. We've just changed the denominator. And now we can, now we have 2 sixths. And our other fraction, 5 sixths, already has 6 in the denominator. So we can just write that one down. And that's what we would do. Here are the steps for rewriting fractions with common denominators. We're going to show a couple examples um, of how to do that and different ways to do it. But before we do that, I, I want to also show one, one reason why we might use this. All right? When we're comparing fractions, like 3 quarters and 2 thirds, we say, which one's bigger? And to, to look at those, you'd say, wow, you know, they're both you know, almost a whole, you know, we could maybe draw a picture or something. But an efficient way to compare them is to give them common denominators. So let's go ahead and do that using our three steps. First, we're going to list the multiples of each denominator. So the multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18. And we could continue, but we're not going to. The multiples of 4, 4. 8, 12, oh, I see some common things there. All right, so as soon as you get something that's common to both of them, you can stop. 
All right, so I really didn't need to continue list 15 and 18, and I didn't need to list 16 here either. As soon as you have a common denominator, you can stop. All right, so let's move that over to the side. What we're going to do now is convert these fractions so that they have the denominator of 12. 3 over 4 is my first fraction. I know that I need to multiply 4 times 3 to get 12. So I'm going to multiply both the top and bottom times 3. 3 times 3 is 9, that'll be in my numerator, and 4 times 3 is 12 in the denominator. Now I have rewritten 3 quarters as a fraction with a denominator of 12. My next fraction, 2 thirds, I'm going to have to multiply 3 times 4 to get 12. So I'll multiply both the top and bottom times 4. 2 times 4 is 8, 3 times 4 is 12. And so my fraction, 2 thirds, is equal to 8 over 12. Now, go back to the original question, which one is bigger? When we had it in 3 quarters or 2 thirds, we might not have been able to compare which one was larger. But now that we look at it this way, 9 over 12 and 8 over 12, we can compare them. And we could write out a statement that says 9 over 12 is greater than 8 over 12. Therefore, and we can write that, that those three dots mean therefore. Therefore, 3 over 4 is greater than 2 over 3 because these are equivalent fractions. 9 over 12 is the same as 3 over 4. And 8 over 12 is the same as 2 over 3. So that's how we would compare these fractions using that. So, so far we've looked at finding the least common multiple, comparing fractions, and making common denominators. So let's go ahead and give a couple more fractions some common denominators. We'll go ahead and practice just a little bit. Make sure that we have these ideas down. All right, I'm going to list my denominators, and then I'm going to start listing multiples of these denominators. Oh, there we go. Okay. Six and nine. So I know six times one is six, six times two is 12, six times three is 18, nine times one is nine, nine times two is 18. See, with most fractions, or with most fractions, with most numbers, you probably won't need to list too many factors, all right? And if you can recognize a factor when it comes up that it is common, you can save yourself having to do a lot of work. So with these two fractions, our common denominator is going to be 18, because that is our least common multiple. So I'm going to convert the fraction 2 sixths by multiplying both the top and bottom times 3. That's going to give me 2 times 3 is 6, and 6 times 3 is 18. So 2 sixths is equal to 6 over 18. Now I'm going to convert 1 over 9, multiply the top and bottom times 2, because that will give me 9 times 2 is 18 in the denominator, and 1 times 2 is 2. So now I've converted these fractions to being having a common denominator. It doesn't ask me to compare them. It doesn't ask me to do anything else. It just asks me to give these two fractions common denominators. So I've rewritten 2 6 is 6 over 18. 1 9th is 2 over 18. All right, if I were asked to compare, I could easily do that. All right, so common denominators. Not only can we use them when we compare fractions, we're also going to use them in the next future lessons when we add or subtract fractions. So don't go forgetting all of this. It's very important, and you will use this. So make sure to practice some of the questions, converting fractions. You can create any fractions you want, and you will be able to make them have common denominators. Have fun with that, and I'll see you next time.